A while ago, I made a video on making a template for contact for Reaper with 16 channels of MIDI going into the plugin and 16 channels of audio coming out. This video did really well and people have been asking for a follow-up to this for the newest version of contact at this time, which is contact seven. So today I will take you through the process of making a template. I will share a link to the template so you can just get started right away. Also talk you through how you would actually use this template to produce music. Here we go. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is open up contact seven um, standalone version. I do have Reaper running, but just to get this started, we use the, the standalone version and uh, we're gonna come over to the view menu. We're, we're gonna be on rack view for this. It doesn't really matter, but the main thing is we need to have this outputs section shown. And in this outputs section, down at the very bottom, we've got these presets, batch configuration options here. So we're actually gonna go to the factory and choose stereo 16X. And we're gonna come back to the menu and go to save current output section state as default for all formats. And now when we open up the VST3 version in Reaper, it will start off with all of these outputs set up instead of whatever else is there. We actually don't even, it doesn't even matter right now that uh, not all of the outputs are connected to actual device outputs. This is just a better starting point for us. All right, so we can quit contact seven. And then in Reaper, we will just right click, insert virtual instrument on the track. And I'll choose contact seven and double click. And then when this window pops up, normally we would choose yes, but in this case, we're gonna choose no. All right, so contact seven VST3 version has loaded and it looks the same because I've, I've got the same uh, view preset, which by the way, set, set current view as default. We can load the output section and we can see that the output section is saved the same. So there's 16 outputs. There are the four aux outputs and these are actually already routed from channels one through to 40. Coming over to the effects chain section, we're gonna right click. And in this menu, we choose build 16 channels of MIDI routing to this track. And so that adds in 16 tracks of MIDI in uh, Reaper's mixer with sends on each one going to different MIDI channels uh, to this receiving track, which has contact on it. We're gonna right click again, same section. We're going to build multi-channel routing for output of selected effects. Now in this window, we choose yes. It's going to make a bunch of tracks in the mixer and we will now look in the mixer at what that looks like. So we've got the contact track, we can disarm it. We don't need to have this track armed anymore. And if we look at the routing for this track, we've got MIDI and audio out. There's a ton of tracks here. The master output for this track is, is uh, disabled there. We can change this to now either a 32 track or a 40 track, um, track, 40 channel track. Uh, so 32 channels is all I'm going to use, but if you want to use the, uh, the, um, the aux channels, you can use the uh, 40 option. I'm going to leave that like that. Let's assign a color to this, just a random color. I'm going to take my output channels and up to the KT out 16, and I'm going to color those, and I'm going to go to the KT aux 1 through 4 and color those. And all these other ones that say KT unassigned, there's a bunch here up to channel track 45. In this case, I'm just gonna delete those. So deleting 24 channels, they're unused. They don't have any audio routed in or out. And now we've got these MIDI channels, 16 channels selected. Also going to color those a different color. Yeah, that's essentially it. This is actually a lot easier than it used to be with contact. Essentially at this point, it would work. There's a few things we should, of course, do. Um, let's set this up in the track manager. The track called Contact 7, that's where the plugin lives. And all the MIDI channels are going to be feeding into that. And then it's going to spit out audio out to these other 20 tracks. So we've got the aux channels if we want to use Contact's internal mixer for delays and reverbs. 
Um, it, you can just delete them if you're, you're never going to use those. Um, but otherwise, yeah, uh, each instrument can have a separate stereo output assigned in Contacts Mixer, uh, which will return into channels in Reaper's Mixer. Then we've got the MIDI channels. Each one of these, if you arm it, it will send the MIDI signal into the specific channel of Contact. And this is going to be set up so that there's 16 instruments inside of Contact, uh, each triggered by different MIDI channels. And so like it's when you play a note, it's not going to be all 16 instruments playing at the same time. It's going to be just whatever MIDI channel you're sending into it. Something I like to do to actually streamline this process so it's a little easier to use is to remove the MIDI channels from the mixer and remove the aux channels and output channels from the track view. Because uh, we don't really need those until we're mixing. We're just focused on getting MIDI input. And uh, unless we're doing automation of plugins and things like that, we don't really need to see those output channels within the arrange view. So what I'm going to do in this column here, this is the MCP column. We're just going to drag down here, and then all those channels will be hidden from Reaper's Mixer. And then on the first column here with the dots, that's going to be the, um, the TCP column. I'm going to take all of those tracks out. So the contact will be visible in both, but the output channels are only in the mixer and the MIDI channels are only in the TCP. One last thing we're going to do here, uh, just because my defaults are to have uh, MIDI monitoring off, I'm just going to enable monitoring for all those tracks and I'm going to unarm them. But now when I uh, arm this and play something on a keyboard, it will come through to contact on its specific MIDI channel. So let's just take the cac the factory library. Let's take the, uh, I don't know, just the organ. And we will set the MIDI channel from uh, to channel one and output one. And that's coming through there on channel one. If I have another instrument, let's take an, a different instrument, let's take alto saxophone, and I have this on the second channel, uh, I will need to assign this to channel two. And I can assign this to output two, which corresponds with contact channels three and four, but it will receive in the mixer on this track here. So there's the organ, and if I record enable the second track, the, MIDI, the second MIDI channel, there's the saxophone. And it's coming out in a different channel in the mixer. So to actually use this, all you need to do is remember to set the output and the input to the specific channels that they're supposed to be. There is a function for this. Yeah, here it is. Um, MIDI channel assignment for loaded patches assigned to Omni. If we set this to assign first free, then it should automatically increment the numbers. So if we do alto saxophone, that's going to be channel A1. And then let's close this. Let's do tenor saxophone. It's automatically gone to A2, but we will need to set this to a different output if we want. So at this point, I will save this as a template with no instruments loaded. Uh, this will be a track template, so you will right-click on an empty track area, choose Insert Track Template, Contact 7, 16 Channel Multi, and um, yeah, you'll be good to go with this starting point. Tweak things to your liking as needed. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.